Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I am filming another episode of my Rapid Reviews series. It was such a hit. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for your feedback. Um, the overwhelming feedback was that you guys really appreciate the balance of it all. Like, we want to hear the glowing reviews, and we want to hear... the not glowing reviews. <laughs> Before I begin this episode, all right, I just wanna have a little one-to-one -one real quick. Overall, it was very positive <laughs> feedback, but there were a couple of people that were hurt by my opinions. So before I proceed, I just wanted to note that these are my, again, opinions. And we are talking about the sense of smell here. Very subjective, very individual, very personal. I got a comment when I posted that video. I don't remember what it was verbatim, like it was so outlandish. Um, I don't remember word for word, but it was something along the lines of, okay, well I guess all of us out there that love mass appealing designer scents should just drop dead because we aren't worthy. Oh boy. Oh gosh, that was good, that, that was good. Well, honey, I guess I should just drop dead too. Oh ma'am, I guess I hit a soft spot. Just because I find some designer mass appealing sense boring does not mean that I am a designer hater. I love designer, but just like niche, okay? Niche does not mean better. I hold perfumes to the same standard. It does not matter to me whether the perfume is $10 or $300. It needs to make me happy. It needs to make me feel like me. And it needs to wow me. That's it. That's my criteria. And there are plenty of niche perfumes that I am not a fan of as well. And for those of you that are new to this series, this is not a fragrances I hate video. This is literally just rapid reviews of fragrances and the majority of them tend to be ones that I wasn't a fan of, but there are some that I did like, but maybe they weren't for me personally, but my review might help you to figure out maybe if it's for you. These two I was recently testing for you know, spring content. And I went into it knowing that these are very polarizing perfumes. They're not for everyone, but I wanted to give them a try because I really appreciate originality. And I do have some perfumes that are polarizing, so I just went for it, but they were not for me. First one being Amouage Blossom Love. This is almond liqueur. It's very powdery from the Heliotrope. Cherry Blossom and Suede. And I was fully expecting to hate this because I feel like that's kind of, unfortunately, the consensus with this one. I didn't hate it, but I definitely disliked it. Um, this smells very mature to me and definitely smells like vintage niche perfumery. Lilac Love was also one that smelled very mature to me, but also has like a real baby powder vibe to it. So it smelled like very old and very young <laughs> at the same time. The purple florals in here just ruin it for me. There's like an overload of purple florals. And then you get powdery chocolate and vanilla, but it's like all encompassing heliotrope, oris, lilac, gardenia. It was too much for me. Ariana Grande, thank you next. I actually, I think it's good. Um, it's very young, super girly, super sweet. And I know that people complain about a pickle note in this one. I didn't get that at all. Yeah, I didn't get it. This is mainly coconut, vanilla, and macaroons, and then a hint of floral and musk. It's too young and sweet for me, um, but overall I thought it was a nice scent and it would be 
like a really good gift I think for someone who's like wanting to get into fragrances and they like their really sweet girly perfumes. I feel like the age range best suited for this one is elementary school even. Um, to high school, but if you love those really sweet girly perfumes, like you wear it, girl. This next one I think is worth checking out because I feel like it was just kind of like how it pulled on my skin didn't work for me, but I could see this being great. Aqua de Parma's Mandorlo de Cecilia. This is powdery, lightly sweet vanilla almond. Out of the atomizer, it smelled incredible and I was like oh my gosh I love this but then when I sprayed it on my skin it smelled predominantly like plastic such a bummer I really want to bring an aqua de parma fragrance into my collection but nothing has piqued my interest except for that perfume and it didn't work out so if you guys have any aqua de parma recommendations that you think I would love please let me know I tried a couple from the Atar collection you guys if you like Angel Share, Hermes, Ambre, Narguile, um, along those lines, those gourmand apple cinnamon pie fragrances, you have to try, how do you say it? Kaltat? Kaltat? Night? I don't know. This is good. 10 out of 10 recommend. It's not for me because it's too foodie gourmand for me, but the scent is incredible. Think Killian's Angel Share, but with a cherry note. Simply what you're getting is cinnamon, apple, cherry, and vanilla. Amazing performer as well, like really good gourmand for the fall and winter. But if you're not into your foodie gourmands or really sweet fragrances, it won't be for you. Hayati, is that how you say it? I'm so sorry. Um, this is vanilla whipped cream, absolutely loaded with fruits, like jam-packed with fruits. This really had potential. Like that sounds divine. There's an ice cream note in it that really sold me. Um, but unfortunately it smells very cheap and it definitely has a plasticky vibe. Like this is absolutely not worth the money in my opinion. Such a bummer because I love that concept. <sighs> Honestly, ever since I smelled a whiff of a waffle cone, I wanna smell every ice cream related fragrance out there. So good, but not this one, unfortunately. Ooh, I also recently tested Burberry Her EDT. I feel like it's been getting a lot of hype lately and I do think it's a good perfume. If you are looking for a perfume that smells like a perfume. Like it's definitely a mainstream kind of vibe to it with a nice crisp pear note. And I am very particular with pear in fragrances. I feel like it usually isn't my vibe, but I really like it when there's like a pear and brett combo that's done well. Like it has to be a nice crisp, realistic, natural smelling pear. I haven't found one that's like completely nailed it for me, full bottle worthy, but I'm on the hunt. I have a travel spray of Ariana Grande, God is a Woman on my way, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, Burberry Her EDT, it is fresh, musky, and then I definitely get the peony and some strawberry. If this was more unique, if it had something like poppin', like gave me a wow factor, then I'd be all over it. But it just smells too perfumey to me. Like, you, you know what I'm talking about. Like perfume that smells like perfume. Like copy and paste that DNA, but then you just add a pair note. That's it. I was wanting something more. Burberry Brit, I think is a good one. I tested this a couple years ago. I wore it to work and I got several compliments. Like it was definitely very mass appealing um, and it is a good smelling perfume. To me, I don't know about you guys, but this smells like a slightly more clean Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. It smelled very similar minus the toffee nut. And unfortunately that kind of perfume is just not me. It annoys me that that's a pair that I don't like. But objectively, it is a good perfume. And one of my coworkers said that that was one of her favorite perfumes I'd ever worn. 
I was testing it out that day. Bottega Veneta Illusion is a very beautiful freshie, but the performance is awful. Like it's legit a skin scent after a half hour. You get bergamot, fresh green notes, white floral. In the dry down, you get a little bit of sweetness from black currant. I'd say it's decently unique for a freshie. It's nothing too special, but it's pleasant and not boring. I found myself trying to kind of like talk myself into loving it and buying a bottle, but then I was like, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm not gonna sit here and like try to persuade myself to love something. Why am I trying to put so much effort into the relationship when I'm not getting it back? Do I like it? Yes, but it doesn't wow me and I shouldn't be pushing myself to love something or to buy something, you know? I'm probably gonna get some hate for this one, but whatever. Um, Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Legere. I actually think that the Good Girl line is good. <laughs> I do think they are good scents. I don't have anything, this is gonna come up contradictory because I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna the things I'm gonna say are gonna be perceived as negative for sure. But objectively, the actual scent itself, I have nothing bad to say about the scent. However, like the original, it smells immature to me. I, I more so have a problem <laughs> with the vibe the picture and energy that I'm getting from these perfumes than the actual scent. Like high school and 20s, and there's nothing wrong with that because I absolutely have perfumes in my collection that give off those younger vibes. But when I smell this, I picture someone irresponsible. People say that this is the fresher version of the original, but this is not a fresh perfume at all. Is it in comparison to the original? Yes, but the perfume itself is not that. It's a bit lighter than the OG for sure, but it is still very similar. This is mainly Dulce de Leche with Tonka, Praline, some florals. It's creamy. I think it's a great fragrance for sure. A great performer. It's just not how I wanna smell. It doesn't fit my vibe. Okay, another unpopular opinion. Chanel's Chance EDT. This is the definition of a perfume that smells like a perfume. I kind of feel like this is where that whole DNA came from, like Chanel. I have smelled this a million and one times. It makes me think of every grown woman I have ever encountered, like just like a mass of women. That's a smell. <laughs> sure, it's a nice smell, but it's incredibly overdone. Like Coco Mademoiselle is so popular, it's everywhere, but it just has something really special to it, in my opinion. Like it's so timeless, iconic, addicting, and even though it is very overdone, it's still stands out. It isn't just another perfume. So that would be more so my pick from Chanel. And then I also tried the EDP, similar kind of situation. It smells nice, but it just smells like a perfume. Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. I guess we're gonna just go through the Chance line here. I, I'm gonna preface this by saying I did not have luck. <laughs> unfortunately. The EDP, this is the Chanel version of a fruity floral. In the opening, I first get fruit, quince and grapefruit. Then florals, I get rose. It's very crisp and refreshing and jasmine. And then I get musk. In the dry down, it smells very powdery and mature to me. The florals then become most dominant with the musk. It's in the opening. I prefer the opening, it has more character. It has more of a sparkling quality to it in the opening, but even the opening wasn't for me. It just, no. The EDT was a big nope of the Otandra. Very powdery purple florals. It smells like a vintage Guerlain perfume. Similar kind of powdery vibe to Guerlain's Ensalance. Um, in the opening, again, you're getting that 
quince and grapefruit, but then that fades and you're like, bam, mature powdery purple florals. Chanel number no. five, low. This is better than the original. That's for sure. It's a modern take in comparison, but I still definitely wouldn't describe it as a modern smelling perfume. I still definitely get the aldehydes. It doesn't smell bad, but it definitely smells mature. Citrusy, fresh, musky, powdery. Not for me at all. And the original number five. Uh, yeah, I loathe that one. Um, I know a lot of people feel that way. It smells ancient. I mean, it is, like it's been around forever, like when an iconic perfume. But yeah, it, it definitely smells like something that was developed a very long time ago. I think we can just come to the consensus that overall Chanel is not the perfume house for me. Um, so I'm sorry if it is for you. It, it's a very popular, loved house. So I know I'm probably in the minority here with uh, some of these opinions, but that's okay, they're my opinions. Chanel Allure, again, just didn't stand out to me. It smelled like a grown up peach scent mixed with very basic perfume, like a lot of florals. And then the Sensuelle version, you get a blast of mandarin orange, no joke. That and patchouli are like main players here. And this smells very dated to me. You get pink pepper, rose, iris, has a baby powder vibe, but then also an aldehydic old kind of smell. I just had to turn on the air conditioning real quick because I was like dying. <laughs> I, get, I can already feel all the, the hate coming my way. It's fine. We need to move on to something a little bit more positive. Yeah. Ducita Moonlight in Chiang Mai. I was very interested in this because of the comparisons to Baccarat Rouge 540 Honey. Not at all. I don't even get like an essence of Baccarat Rouge 540 in this. Not a bit. This was not for me, but this is not bad at all. I actually think overall it is good. The Yuzu is a very unique citrus note that I think just isn't quite for me. Like the actual note doesn't smell bad, but wearing it, I'm just like not a fan of. So you get that yuzu and then a lot of teak wood. The combo just isn't doing it for me. And then you also get myrrh, benzoin, vetiver, and the yuzu comes off in a way like it's been sitting in the sun for too long, like a hot yuzu, kind of like the effect hot pineapple has, like pineapple on pizza. And a subscriber kindly sent me um, a decant of this perfume. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, Ely Sobs Girl of Now Forever. This is nice. This is actually the only Girl of Now perfume that doesn't turn funky on my skin. This is very girly and fruity. Raspberry to the max. Simply put, this is a sugary raspberry lemon candy. It has some tart to it and vanilla. It's too girly and sweet for me, but I do think it's a good perfume. If, that, if this is your kind of thing, it's fun and it has amazing performance. I have no idea how to say this brand, so I'm just gonna say Eldo. <laughs> uh, remarkable people. My first impression of it was like, oh, this is good, but then something smelled familiar about it and then I showed it to my boyfriend and he's like, yeah, it smells good. Well, like that was about it and he was like, it smell and then again, he also said it was super familiar. So I was looking up what people on Fragrantica were saying and they were saying like a men's aftershave or like a 90s cologne and I so get that. Um, the opening is the best to me, like you get that fizzy, uplifting, fun champagne quality, the cardamom, the fresh aromatic quality from the curry tree. It doesn't smell like curry. So my first impression was like, I like this. Like maybe this will grow on me. Maybe I'll get a bottle. We'll see how the dry down goes. But then going into the dry down, it definitely turns into that kind of 90s men's cologne and it smells really good. It smells like just that typical sexy man's cologne. It's bubbly, a nice citrus, fresh spicy. It's like a good, fresh, clean, soapy, 
out of the shower kind of scent. It's not anything wow factor. It's nothing, unfortunately, <laughs> remarkable. It's not something you haven't smelled before, but it was fun to experience. Frederick Malls Liz Mediterrani. This is so good. Very underrated. I feel it's so interesting and unique. The opening had me. I was like, I'm gonna get a full bottle of this, but I'm discovering, much to my dismay, <laughs> that vanilla and like marine salt, sea salt, water combos don't work well on my skin. It's not bad, but it turns a little funky. It almost feels like they're not getting along quite right. Like you have two great notes, but they're not they're not coming together to make the dream team. And I really want to find more salty vanillas. I love Idol Aura from Lancome. Love it. And I want to find more salty vanillas, but it's not working out so far. I've not given up, but this is great. This is a great perfume and I hope that it works on you better than it did on me. You mainly get Lily and Lotus, which are beautiful aquatic white florals. You definitely get that C note, a fresh musk, and then some vanilla to sweeten it up. Just a touch. The opening though, with that like zingy ginger note, so good. And this might come off weird, but the fragrance smells wet. <laughs> to me. Yeah, I don't know. Don't really know what to say about that. But it's good. It's underrated. And I think on the right person's skin. Oh. Okay, I'm going to end this on a positive note. Kristen Fragrances on Instagram. Check her out. I love, love her. Recommended this perfume. And it's an Excellent recommendation. We are talking about Giorgio Armani's Stronger With You Intensely, and this is marketed towards men, but this is totally unisex. Like, ladies, get on this. It is good. She was talking about how it was such a good gourmand and to not be afraid of trying it just because it's marketed towards men. I was this close to buying a bottle, but I was like, let's get real. Let's get real with ourselves, Anna. This is, this is just a touch too sweet for you, unfortunately, like just a touch, but it's so good. The opening is unisex leaning masculine and the dry down is unisex leaning feminine. The opening is actually my favorite because it's in the opening where you're getting juniper, lavender, sage, pink pepper mixed with those gourmand notes. After five minutes, Cinnamon, vanilla, tonka bean, and toffee take over. This is super gourmand and sweet, like definitely giving me angel share vibes in that family. Sweet apple cider, just like chef's kiss. So good, but you guys know me, like I love angel share too, but yeah, whatever. We've already gone through this. We've talked about this already in this video. I love the smell and appreciate the smell of these gourmands. I just, I can't, I just can't wear them because they end up getting too like foodie and sweet on me, but it's good. It's good. So that's wrapping it up for today. Those are my reviews on a good chunk full of fragrances. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel down below if you want to see me in any more videos. I'd appreciate it so, so much. Um, I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!